Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another kiln opening video. I wanted to do a video on um, some of the glaze results I just got and some of the techniques that I've started to do. Um, one of the first things is this blue glaze right here. This is, um, I've shown it before, it's Spruce Blue by Clayworks. And um, it's really one of my favorite glazes that I've ever used because it's pretty reliable. But what I wanted to mention about it is that I've started to really try to get a strong cone 6 when I use that glaze because it will be matte if you don't really get a good enough temperature. Here's a mug. Let me just show this. Um, that is probably more like a cone 5. And you can see that it's more matte. It's kind of more of a gray blue there. And on this side, where it was probably hotter, you can get that um, sort of denim, shiny, uh, blue look. So it is really important, I guess, with this glaze to, um, to get a really strong cone 6. And anytime that I'm using that glaze now, I try to hold the temperature. And I have a manual kiln, so it's not really the easiest thing to do holding temperature uh, with a manual kiln so it's been a little tricky but this this time it really came out perfect I mean it looks really professional almost like reduction look to it so that is a keeper definitely that glaze and I'm gonna probably need to get more of that already and these are just a bunch of sponge holders with um, spruce blue and um, copper patina on it copper patina is by um, Kentucky Mud Works, although Clayscapes does make one. I haven't tried theirs yet. It's a great um, combination. The copper glaze is not food safe though. And I'm doing this video indoors, so I'm hoping that the colors are coming through well. And these are just some garlic plates, um, by the way. I may do a video on um, how to make these. It's simple, but really getting the texture correct is the main issue with those. And then, of course, glazing them, because if you do use a heavy glaze, you can cover your texture up. So it's it's a little tricky to um, get a good finished result with those. I have some here that are kind of marginal. They're not, you know, really a strong enough texture. But I think I'm going to do a video on uh, how to make those, because it took me longer than it should have to figure that out. And um, these uh, spoon rests here, I kind of wanted to show... I really, I don't measure these. I mean, I weigh the, the clay almost exact to a pound every time. There's the top three of them there are almost exactly the same size. And I really wasn't trying to do that. But I think the reason that that happens, you know, after a while when you've thrown a lot of them, of course, you do start to get a sense for them, anything you throw. But if we just come over here, we'll talk about all the rest of this in a minute. This is um, the Wonder Bat, and I've been using it for a while. I have um, 12 inserts that I have used for this. Now, I can't say that I absolutely love this thing because to get this in and out when you're throwing can be really frustrating. And when I first started using it, I kind of wanted to just throw it away. It was, uh, you know, you have to put like a piece of metal in here, something something metal to pry this out because you have to wet this to put it in and it's you have to hit it in there and then you throw and then to get it back out you have to pretty much dig it out of there. So it's not, um, you know, the most user friendly thing that way but I bought it because of the space that the, the, um, the bats will take up after I throw. I can really throw a lot of things and just put it on one shelf and and then come back to it later as opposed to a larger bat. But when you throw, I think what it does do is it helps you to throw smaller things um, really without measuring or without a gauge. I'm not really that concerned whether or not my spoon rests all look the same. It's not really something that matters, but at the same time, it's kind of nice that I do get a consistent result throwing smaller things even mugs and you know the spoon the um sponge holders and i don't think i usually throw the garlic plates on here but it just goes to show that this does have 
a good purpose, you know, because you do get sort of a gauge out of it because you're kind of just naturally seeing um, the perimeter around what you're throwing. So it's kind of a kind of a neat thing that way, and it is very very durable. They're they're made of some kind of composite that is just very strong. I'm surprised how well this holds up because you do have to pry it off and. I thought I was going to wreck it, but they, they've held up really well. They're just not the most perfect system in the world, but they have helped me to throw really consistent small things. And um, these plates here were done in foam trays, and I was going to bring those over here to show, but it's just the foam trays that you, you, know, you get things in at the, at the grocery store. So that's the shape of these. These are on um, red rock clay, which has little specks in it. And uh, I'm probably not going to be using that clay anymore. I'm going to just use the regular red stone, which doesn't have any specks. But you can see the specks coming through. So what this is, is um, it's opal glaze. Opal is by Coyote. And opal is really good, at least the one out of the jar. It's very good at showing texture. And I wanted to show this because um, this is kind of like a crossover um, clay tool. These are called Art Foamies. And I also make cards. So this is kind of how I ended up using these, was really for cards. And I thought they might work in clay. This is what they look like on the cards that I do. Um, you know, pretty simple. Um, application there for cards because you just put paint on and press it down. And I thought, well, for clay, I'm really going to have to get a much um, heavier, consistent pressure out of it. So you do have to kind of put it down like that and really evenly try to press that in. And it's not not impossible but I wasn't sure what the result really was going to be but as you can see it came out great this particular glaze picks up all of the texture that is on that that um, foam stamp and you know there are quite a uh, lot of foam stamps available if you go to a craft store but I tend to think that they're very cartoony whereas this Art Foamies that's actually a Canadian company Art Foamies, um, they have a lot of really crisp, well-designed stamps. I'm definitely going to get more. I probably have about five or six of them. They're, they're larger. Most of them are, are pretty large like this. And uh, they have great detail. You can see on that seahorse the amount of detail. I have not used that in clay yet, but I'm going to be doing that. Um, and it's just, uh, it's just another option of something else you might want to try. Um, and the other thing I was thinking with these is you may be able to even put underglaze on them and get a stamp that way. It might be a little bit, um, you know, kind of a cloudier look around the edges, but it's possible maybe to even use them with glaze on them. It's something else I might try. So, other than that, I also did some more foam tray dishes, and these are um, heavily textured ones. Same clay, same red rock clay with specs. So this glaze right here is something I've kind of not used that much. I just started using it. It is called Turquoise Rain, and that is also by Clayscapes. At this point, I'm really loving all the Clayscapes glazes. They, they're a very informative glaze company. They will send you information how to mix them, what the hydrometer reading should be. Um, it just demystifies the entire process. So you can get really great results right away with their glazes. So I highly recommend if you're a potter, if you're not really sure what to do, go check out Clayscapes and see if they have some glazes that you might want to try. I also use Kentucky Mudworks quite a bit. So between those two companies, I found a lot of great glazes to use. So this is Cream. Um, which is kind of like more of a reactive glaze, I guess, with, with of their line because they do recommend using cream with quite a lot of their, their glazes to get the reaction. And it um, was a great color, the, the overlap there. But I was amazed at how this turquoise rain 
look on red clay. This was like a test. I hadn't tested it on red clay. I tested it on buff clay and it was very, very light in color. But the amount of um, texture that it showed was just amazing. I couldn't believe that it showed that well. So, and it's more like an antique kind of green look on red clay. Because it is a pretty dark clay, but I was really, really happy with that result. And I will definitely be getting some more of that because I only got five pounds. This was um, also a, a tray foam plate and it is Jade Moss by Kentucky Mudworks, uh, also combined with cream. And this is speckled brownstone where so you know you're getting the specks in the cream. The cream does not have any specks on its own. It would just be a white glaze. So, you know, it kind of gives more of like an oatmeal look when you have a speckled clay. So that also was nice. And I think I overlapped the cream onto the jade moss. And I probably did the same thing. Oops, right there with the cream over turquoise rain. So the other thing are the mugs. And um, basically for mugs, I mostly use um, buff clay. And this is desert buff. And I've been making a lot of stamps, rubber stamps. I just have them made and I use that to get the design in the front. And then I just put either a black or a blue glaze into it and wipe it out. And then you have to wax this, the medallion, and then do your glazing. So um, this glaze right here is Hillbilly Blues by Kentucky Mudworks. And this is Aqua by Clayscapes. And the nice thing about that glaze combination is that little line that you get right there. And it is, um, the, the Hillbilly Blues is over Aqua and that's been the result that I've been getting with that. So, been pretty happy. I did quite a few mugs like that. And this again is just a, a medallion used from a rubber stamp and then it has probably black glaze um, pushed in and you have to wipe it away and then you wax it. So I've made quite a few stamps lately and that's Jade Moss right there on uh, on buff clay with Hillbilly Blues. So done quite a bit of that and this welcome sign is just going to have some copper wiring to hold it up. That is Opal on um, red rock clay. Comes out really nice on dark clay. Then I just have a few bowls here. That's Jade Moss on speckled brown clay with the um, cream on the inside. Came out pretty good. Um, a little bit of issue with not enough glaze on the bottom part of the bowl there. And uh, same technique as the mugs. So that's about it for now. I just wanted to kind of share those few techniques and uh, various things that have been going on. So I hope um, it's a little bit helpful for anyone who's searching for glazes or, you know, different techniques that you might be able to do with very little, um, you know, investment or time, really, considering the um, art foamy thing, which is kind of a easier thing to do than painting or something like that so give that a try and um thank you for watching